it's mostly casual commander where we do our best to keep our games of commander fun without sacrificing our ability to win i'm bk and today's game has lathril blade of the elves marin of clan neltoth edgar markov and atraxa praetor's voice please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already and you could always support us on patreon as well link in the description and be sure to check out our next video which will have commanders from streets of new capenna so kyle kicked us off with an overgrown tomb into an elvish mystic and then he passes the turn to Azrael, who plays a forest as his land for turn, and passes over to me. I play a swamp, and say go, in Kovacs' general direction. He plays a temple garden, has it entered tap, and says go to Kyle. He plays a forest as his land for turn, followed by elves of deep shadow. Some additional mana ramp at the cost of life. Then he casts Copperhorn Scout, which will allow him to untap each of his other creatures whenever he attacks with Copperhorn Scout. He chips in at Azrael's life total, dropping him to 39 before saying go. A forest hits the battlefield on Azrael's board, and he passes the turn over to me. I play a plains on my second turn, and I cast Cover of Darkness, naming Vampire, so all of my vampires now have fear and are harder to block. A forest enters the battlefield on Kovacs' side, followed by Swiftfoot Boots, which can certainly make his Atraxa scary and fast. Kyle casts his commander, Lathril, Blade of the Elves, on his turn, and he goes to combat, chipping away at Kovacs' life total with Copperhorn Scout. This will untap the rest of his elves, and then he passes the turn to Azrael. A third forest enters his battlefield, followed by a really cool cultivate. So he will go find two swamps, one will enter the battlefield tapped, and the other one will go to his hand. On to BK's turn, I play Dragon Skull Summit as my land which enters the battlefield untapped. I follow that up with Welcoming Vampire. This will produce me a 1-1 Vampire off of Eminence from Edgar. And over to Kovacs, he plays Deserted Beach for his land, and he passes the turn to Kyle. He plays another Forest as his land, and then he taps, taking a little bit of life to cast Elvish Champion, giving all of his elves plus one, plus one, and Forest Walk. He then moves to combat, swinging at Azrael and Kovacs. This allows him to untap all of his creatures it also gains him three Elf Warrior tokens off of Lathril hitting Ezreal. He then casts Pact of the Serpent for X equal 8, so he draws 8 cards and loses 8 life. Not a bad way to refill your hand in an Elf Tribal deck. Of note, he did tap Lathril and keep Lathril tapped, but in just a moment we'll correct that. So he draws his 8 cards, then he plays Wild Growth on his Forest, gaining him some additional mana ramp, and passes the turn over to Ezreal. That second Swamp enters the battlefield, followed by Gary, Grey Merchant of Asphodel. This will drain each one of his opponents two life, and then Azrael will gain six life. And over to my turn, I play another Plains as my land, and follow that up with Immersturm Predator. This gives me a 1-1, also draws me a card off of Welcoming Vampire. This is uh, the longest game I've had without Smothering Tithe showing up. <laughs> yeah. You're right, Azrael. I could go for a Smothering Tithe right about now. I chip away at Kyle's life total and pass the turn to Kovacs. He plays a Plains as his land for turn, followed by a really glared out Garrick's Uprising. And he passes the turn over to Kyle. He draws and plays Guardian Project. A great way to draw a ton of cards in a commander deck. He then casts Deathrite Shaman, triggering Guardian Project and drawing him a card. Lothril's coming at the Man with Forest. That's a shame. Copperhorn Scout <laughs> is going at Kovacs. <laughs> so he goes into combat, attacking Azrael and Kovacs, untapping all of his creatures except for Copperhorn Scout, and dropping them to 37 and 33 respectively. So, Evoke Foundation Breaker, targeting Guardian Project. Okay. And then, all oh, its Evoke is triggered, so I'm going to stack. I will sacrifice him uh, to draw two cards and create a treasure token. So he draws his two cards and gets a treasure. Glare does not look as bad. And actually, your gear is upright. It's because it's a foil and it sucks and I hate it. I wish it wasn't. Here, yeah, move it over here. And that's much better. We're getting there, people. I bet we could optimize your equipment if we had more subscribers and Patreon supporters. So anyway, I start blasting away with Blasphemous Act. In response, Kyle activates Lathril, draining each of his opponents 10, and then he gains 10. And in response to that, I cast Boros Charm giving all of my permanents indestructible. I take one life, and then I clear the board of every creature except for mine. Then I smash my creatures into Kyle, dropping him to 25 before passing the turn. On Kovacs' turn, he plays Gisela, the Broken Blade, triggering Garrick's Uprising, drawing him a card. 
And then he passes to Kyle. He plays Elvish Archdruid, which gives all of his other elves plus one plus one and taps for a bunch of mana. Then he plays a kind of sad Jiraga Warcaller. It's not kicked, so it's just a 1 1. On Ezrael's turn, he casts his commander, Marin of Clan Neltoth. And then he casts Blood Artist, making sure he could take advantage of all of his sacrificing and reanimation shenanigans. On the end step, he gets Foundation Breaker back to his hand thanks to Marin. Over to my turn, I cast Vanquisher's Banner, naming Vampire, pumping my Vampire team, and hopefully drawing me some cards. When I move into combat and tap Immerstern Predator, I exile things from Azrael's graveyard, and I smash Kyle in the face again. Over to Kovacs, he draws his card and casts Cultivate. He finds two swamps, puts one of them onto the battlefield tapped, and puts the other into his hand. Then he moves to combat, picking on Kyle, dropping him down to eight points, and gaining another four life. On to Kyle's turn, he plays a forest as his land for turn, and plays Elvish Clan Caller, another elf tribal anthem on a stick. Then he casts Read the Bones. He scries two, and then draws two cards. He should then lose two life, but sadly we don't catch that, so he just rides it out with eight instead of six. But it didn't impact the game. Pawn of Ulamog enters the battlefield on Ezreal's board, getting him an Eldrazi spawn token. He then evokes out Foundation Breaker again. This time it destroys my Cover of Darkness and triggers Pawn of Ulamog, Blood Artist, and Marin. So he gets another Eldrazi spawn, he drains me and gains one life, and he gets another experience counter off Marin. He then moves to combat, hitting me for three commander damage. On his end step, he gets Foundation Breaker back to his hand. On my turn, I play a Swamp as my land for turn. I take one life to cast my commander, Edgar Markov. This triggers Vanquisher's Banner, drawing me a card. And I like the position I'm in with my commander on the board. I move to combat. When I tap Immersturm Predator, I exile another thing from Azrael's graveyard and swing at both Azrael and Kyle. And Edgar triggers. So are those, Tokyo, are those vampire tokens three threes now? Yeah. That's a shame. And once those plus one plus one counters are put out on all of my vampires, I knock Kyle out of the game. Sorry, Kyle, your elf deck just gets too scary too fast. Azrael chump blocked Edgar Markov with Pawn of Ulamog, triggering Blood Artist and Marin, getting another Eldrazi spawn as well. Over to Kovacs' turn, he plays Dreamroot Cascade as his land for turn. Then he casts an Endless One where X equals six. So it is a 6-6 vanilla creature that has counters on it and triggers Garrick Uprising. He then moves to combat with Gisela at myself, dropping me to 16, and he goes to 31. On to Azrael's turn number 8, he sacrifices a spawn off the get-go, draining me, and then he casts Casualties of War with the floating mana he had. He blows up Vanquisher's Banner, Edgar Markov, Garrick's Uprising, and my Sunbaked Canyon. He then moves to combat swinging three more points of commander damage at myself. Pawn of Ulamog is returned to the battlefield, giving him another spawn as well. I play Fabled Passage as a land for turn. I crack it and go find an untapped mountain. Then with that, I cast Metallic Mimic. What are you naming? Vampire. I probably could have named Elf, but maybe not. Vampire Nighthawk is a follow-up play, which gets a plus one plus one counter when it enters the battlefield and gets me a 1-1 thanks to Eminence. With that, I move to combat, swinging Immersturm Predator and Welcoming Vampire at Ezreal, exiling another thing and dropping him to nine. On to Kovacs' turn, he plays a Swamp. Toxroll? I'm oh, probably good. Oh, okay. <laughs> With Toxroll on the stack, Ezreal sacrifices his spawn, triggering Blood Artist and Marin and preventing Kovacs from getting an additional Slug token. On his end step, all of our creatures get a Slime Counter. With Toxroll out, that means they get minus one, minus one. So this also kills my Metallic Mimic, which would have allowed Ezreal to drain, but sadly we missed that one. Ezreal does get another spawn off of Pawn of Ulamog because his Blood Artist died. On his turn, he casts Arcane Signet. He sacrifices his spawn for floating mana and casts Incarnation Technique. He chooses myself as a demonstrate target, so he gets to mill the top five of his library twice and reanimate two things. In this case, he finds a Spore Frog. When I mill my top five, I fortunately find a Bloodline Necromancer. So when that ETBs, I could also return another Vampire or Wizard from my graveyard to the battlefield which will be Yeheni, Undying Partisan. This also triggers Welcoming Vampire, drawing me a card. When Ezreal mills his second top five, he doesn't really find any good targets other than the Blood Artist that's already in the bin. 
After all that, he realizes Tox roll triggers on every end step, so he decides to sacrifice Spore Frog, preventing him from getting another slug. He sacrifices his Eldrazi spawn for the same reason, draining Kovacs again. And on Azrael's end step, Tox roll triggers, handing out additional slime counters to all the creatures in the battlefield, shrinking some to death such as his Pawn of Ulamog, as well as my three vampire tokens. But this does give him another Eldrazi spawn. On my turn, I drop a Swamp and cast Anguished Unmaking on Toxril, getting him the heck out of dodge. So we discuss and agree that we'll get rid of all the slime counter representation on the creatures. Technically, those slime counters are still on our creatures, but nothing else in Kovacs' deck cares about them in particular. So I cast Rakish Air and move right into combat. This will trigger my Immersturm Predator, exiling another thing out of Azrael's graveyard. But he pops his Spore Frog, preventing all combat damage. Deathcap Glade enters the battlefield on Kovacs' board. He casts his commander, Atraxa, Praetor's Voice. And to add a little bit of protection, he equips Swiftfoot Boots to Atraxa. He casts Agra Constrictor as a follow-up play, giving two plus one plus one counters to it, as well as menace to all of the things that have counters on them. He moves to attack, I chump block his endless one, but I still drop to five, and Azrael drops to six. Azrael casts Victimize on his turn. This triggers Yeheni when he sacks his spawn in order to reanimate two things from his graveyard. In this case, it's Pawn of Ulamog and Grave Lighter. Those two creatures should be tapped, but we all suck, and we missed that. Sometimes we make mistakes, but that's okay. Yavamaya, Cradle of Growth, is played as a land for turn on Ezreal's side of the board, followed up with an Elvish Mystic, Monodork, on turn 10. Fleshbag Marauder hits the battlefield for Ezreal. He will sacrifice his own Fleshbag Marauder. I'll get rid of Rakish Air, and a Slug Token dies on Kovacs' board. This pumps Yeheni a little bit more and gives Ezreal some triggers. He gets a Spore Frog back to the battlefield on his end step thanks to Marin. On my turn, I play Godless Shrine tapped, and then we talk politics. So if I'm going to attack him with the three flyers, my deal to you is that you don't attack me this turn. On my un next turn. Until he's dead and it's my turn okay. again. Deal. I okay. Neither Kovacs nor I have an answer for Spore Frog coming back so often, so we decide to work together. I force Ezreal to pop the frog, preventing combat damage. Then onto Kovacs' turn, he casts Verdurous Gear Hulk, putting plus one plus one counters on Atraxa, Gisela, Verdurous, and one Slug. He then moves to combat with a bunch of menacing creatures that can't be blocked by Ezreal and knocks him out of the game. On his end step, Atraxa allows him to proliferate, giving plus one plus one counters to all of his stuff. On my turn, I cast a Legion Lieutenant, getting a 1-1, as well as a card draw off of Welcoming Vampire. But I don't find the answer I'm looking for, so I decide to try to smash in. I drop Kovacs down to 24, gain a little bit of life. Then, on his upkeep, he casts Spirit on Dull, getting Atraxa Shadow. He plays a Forest as his land for turn, followed by Life Crafter's Gift, giving an additional plus one plus one counter on Atraxa. Then, all of his creatures with counters get additional counters. He just wants to rub it in a little bit, I think. He knocks me out of the game by dealing a ton of combat damage. Congratulations, Kovacs! So please let us know what you think in the comments. As always, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.